everybody. We're out for another Sunday drive. Today uh, we're going to take a look at another forgotten Ohio, uh, the Ohio Reclamation Park, and what was left over uh, from one of the largest dragline cranes in the world. So uh, jump in and ride along if you want to. It won't take very long. Well, here we are at Miners Memorial Park. Uh, this is the final resting place uh, for what's left of AEP's Goliath, uh, Big Muskie, the largest dragline crane in the world. What you're looking at is the bucket uh, left over from Big Muskie. Uh, Big Muskie was, like I said, the largest dragline crane uh, in existence. It crawled all over these hillsides in central Ohio and uh, was uh, a committee was put together to try to save it and make a museum out of it and uh, the only money they could raise was enough to save the bucket. Uh, AEP uh, got upwards of $10 million for the scrap metal. Big Muskie carved all these hillsides around here and the Ohio Reclamation Act uh, came in behind them and turned it into one of the most beautiful places uh, in, in the Ohio Valley. Uh, there are over 700 man-made lakes and ponds here and uh, who knows how many that have been generated by nature. Beavers build dams uh, along the creeks and rivers and, and new lakes and ponds are born every year. People come from all over the country and all over the world to go fishing and hunting here. Uh, the, the reclamation uh, that was done after Big Muskie uh, was finished scraping the land here uh, has made some of the best hunting and fishing uh, in the United States. I used to love to come by here when I was a kid and watch Big Muskie uh, in action. Um, it was just a sight to behold. Uh, the thing was just enormous uh, in, si in, in size and height. Uh, it crawled on its own legs and there was a crew of about 30 people it took to operate it. You can see how large the bucket is. Uh, you could easily uh, uh, park uh, uh, six or seven full-size vehicles uh, in that bucket at one time uh, and again this was all that the, the committee could save they just couldn't raise enough money to save the entire machine we're going to take a ride now and take a look at some of the most beautiful uh, fishing and hunting ground left behind by this monster uh, that you can imagine this should give you some idea how big the chains are Yes, there was a time when the folks would say to me, Won't you take me Hunting, down fishing, and camping uh, here is free. All you have to do is apply for a permit uh, through American Electric Power. So what you're looking at is some of the beauty Big Muskie left behind. Uh, this should put to rest any rumors that uh, everything about the coal industry is bad. Uh, this is some of the most beautiful land on earth and again provides some of the best fishing and hunting uh, in the country. Uh, there are several campsites uh, through this entire region uh, starting from A through F and we're going to take a look at a few of them today. And I'm looking through the window, I see a man working on a railroad track yesterday. yesterday. I remember taking gold mail and riding with Colonel Will. And I won't forget the time the blacksmith packs my wagon wheel. A good sight to see Things just ain't been the same since They parked me beneath this tree Yesterday Well, 
Well, that's about it. We're going to stop by the old lock number seven on the Muskingum River and leave you with that today. Uh, and as always, until next time, peace out. We're here at one of the, the old locks on the muddy Muskingum River. These canals are dug off the side of the river uh, and you would enter the lock on one side and then the gates would close and they would drain the water and lower you down to the next level and let you out the other side. These locks were operated by hand uh, through these handles. Uh, the, the lock porter would come around and walk this handle around and close the gates on one side uh, and, and flood it and open them on the other side. I passed through these locks hundreds of times as a kid. I grew up on this river and was water skiing here at the age of five. We had a summer cabin on this river bank and uh, growing up along here as a kid, uh, I can remember waking up on, uh, on Sunday mornings and this river being so calm it looked like glass and the water was so warm it felt like pee. You know, this has always amazed me. I wanted you guys to see the road uh, that leads into here and uh, some perspective of where we're at so you can help me understand why this stuff is here. Now, this has been here for a long time. There's no signs, there's no plaque, there's no nothing. It's out in the middle of the boonies. I want to take a closer look at this uh, helicopter. Now it's important for you to understand we are out in the boonies. Man, this thing is cool. Looks like part of the old machine gun down there. There's no trespassing signs on them. So it must be somebody's private collection is the only thing I can figure. Looks like some kind of rocket launchers. This is the area surrounding this, literally out in the middle of nowhere. Is there anybody out there?